Well, Stuart, thanks for the uh, agreeing to this um, interview. You were uh, supposed to be in the Jersey Royal Court uh, today um, for something to do with this recent super injunction or data protection case. Uh, can you tell us what's going on? Tell us a little bit about this. Well, I know very little about it. I mean, apparently uh, there's some kind of furtherance of the recent super injunction data protection uh, actions uh, against me that's going on. Apparently there's some kind of hearing taking place in court today. Now, I've gone back to my flat and found some bits of paper and a, a file on my doorstep, but this is the first I've heard of it. Um, from what I can gather, it appears to be the Data Protection Commissioner and uh, the Attorney General, again, who operates behind the scenes in these cases, uh, apparently have decided to ignore the uh, ruling of the recent judge where he said no further action would be taken. They clearly don't like that, so they've decided to try and resurrect it, apparently, and take further action against me. Uh, from what I can gather, and I, I know very little about it at the moment, they're trying to uh, enact some further um, injunction against me for having spoken to, ridiculously enough, the Jersey Evening Post and BBC Jersey after this recent judgment was made public. Now, given that the court itself chose to make the judgment public and started being discussed in the media and the media came to me and spoke to me about it, it's kind of, I think it's very revealing and it says a great deal about the basically the oppression and abuse of nature of these Jersey public authorities, in spite of the fact that they chose to publish the document, they're now seeking to get some kind of further injunction against me for having spoken to the media after they published it. I mean, it's just, you, know, you, you couldn't make the stuff up. So the, the media, obviously they're, they're not gagged, and what, are you yeah. saying that they were saying, well, you were still gagged, you weren't allowed to talk to the media? Uh, that, 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 that's absolutely correct. Apparently it's okay for the court system to decide it wants to publish these judgments, you know, which have got a lot of rubbish in them, frankly, and which you know, they can then use to portray me as some kind of villain. And they're quite happy to publish the stuff, and they're quite happy for the local media to report it. But apparently if I then speak to the local media or answer the local media's questions about this, that merits apparently uh, further injunctions or some kind of ridiculous... Uh, further so what kind of injunction is this then that they're putting I, on you? I, I haven't a clue to be honest. I don't really know the, the details of it yet. I haven't had uh, any kind of time to consider it. I mean, in, in a nutshell, it's basically a furtherance of the corrupt and abusive oppression that the local authorities, the government and the courts in particular are pursuing, abusing the data protection law, using proxy individuals. They're abusing the data protection law to basically stop uh, people like me or you or anyone else for that matter seriously criticizing Jersey's government and exposing all of the many many corrupt failures of the government and the court system in Jersey that's the subtext that's the underlying reality uh, this rubbish about this being about some poor innocent individuals who have been maligned as just cobblers like this is all about an action you know of the Jersey's entrenched feudal mafia want to make it a crime to criticise them. Oh, so, yeah, I mean, you've defied the courts. In the past, you've, you've defied the court's ruling. Uh, and they, you know, you left the, stuff, the, the offending articles up on your blog. In fact, you added to it on one particular case. And, okay, um, so you, you've defied the ruling of the court. You've not only defied the ruling of the court, you've actually defied the court as a whole. And uh, you, you don't view it as a, as a legal entity or, or something like that. Um, well, it isn't. So are you going to carry on on that train? Are you going to defy this latest uh, injunction or whatever it is that, that they've, uh, you're getting done with today? Well, I mean, obviously, because, because it isn't lawful. You know, sometimes people that haven't made a, a detailed study of the, of the case and they haven't kind of followed this on the blogs. Occasionally people say to me, oh, you're defying the court. Well, we know you're kind of right, but you know, shouldn't you try and fight it through the courts? You know, um, you know, did, you know, aren't you acting as though you as an individual are above the law? To which I, I say, uh, no. And, and the explanation is clearly there on the facts, on you know, the most cursory examination of judicial conduct. Um, any person is entitled, if they have to go to court, for whatever reason, they're entitled to an objective, impartial court. You know, where the judges aren't involved, where the judges are not conflicted in any way, 
where they meet the test of the appearance of objectivity. Now that is the law. You know, that's not just me making that up, that is unambiguously the settled law. Now, when the Jersey judicial system does all these ridiculous, corrupt things to me, the judges are either local judges, like William Balash or Bridget Shaw, who are directly conflicted individuals who have a history of being involved in the many questionable failures of governance and, and justice in Jersey over recent years and decades, not least failures to prosecute certain child abusers and things of that nature. Now, therefore, those judges, like William Balash, like Bridget Shaw, are conflicted. Now, it's therefore not lawful, and it hasn't been lawful, for those individuals to sit in any case involving me. The same is true of any judge who's a friend of theirs, who they chose to hear cases concerning me. It just isn't lawful. And we get to an altogether more serious question mark over the entire validity of what passes for court system in Jersey when we consider the position of the bailiff, Michael Burt. Now, he is the head of the judicial function in Jersey. And he, in fact, has chosen and appointed most of the English judges who they wheel in you know, to hear these ridiculous cases against me. Now, these judges are often friends of his. Now, the problem is Michael Burt has got a lot of serious questions to answer very serious questions about, for example, all kinds of failures and very alarming cases that occurred when he was Attorney General. All kinds of serious cases involving the most serious crimes, things like child abuse, corruption, things of that nature. What kind of questions has he got to, to answer? Well, for example, um, he uh, abandoned the prosecution midway through of Jane and Alan Maguire, who featured on the Panorama programme. Now, it appears that actually that was an improper abandonment. There was clearly ample evidence to continue that prosecution through, and indeed, had they been investigated properly, more than additional charges should have been laid against them. Now, that's a very, very serious matter. Now, before I was corruptly driven out of the States, throughout the course of 2007 and 2008 and beyond, I was investigating cases like that, really trying to expose them and get to the truth, and other similar cases, cases in which Michael Burt was the directly most centrally conflicted public official. For example, there's the very serious case of the alleged murderer that I've been trying to expose and the failure of Jersey's authorities to properly investigate that case. And again, Michael Burt centrally involved. Now, Michael Burt is the head of the Jersey judiciary. He knows all of the jurats, they're close friends of his. He knows all of the local judges and he knows he chooses and appoints these English judges who then come in to hear these cases against me and put me in prison for trying to expose the truth and for trying to protect vulnerable people because there are these many serious question marks concerning cases that actually involve Michael Burt. Now, this is simply not a lawful system. If Jersey people are going to have the proper protections of the rule of law, we have to get a proper effective objective judiciary. Now, I've written in detail now to Michael Burt, asking him for a deposition and asking him a detailed range of serious questions. And I've informed him that in the event, somehow an objective impartial court is made available to me in Jersey, I'm going to be calling him as a key witness and he's going to have to answer a lot of questions about these matters. Well, okay, so if we can get back on here, so we, you're not the only, there's a lot, there's a, more and more people are speaking out against what they see to be a corrupt, politicised judicial system and, but we, we see that it's broken. What can we, I mean, have you, who can fix it? Have you, have you contacted anybody in London and made them aware of these well, it, it, it's interesting, isn't it, that the London apparatus, as many, many individuals who have complained to London about Jersey, we, we all know that we get the same pro forma dismissal. Now, this is clearly an unlawful failure by the authorities in London, as a public authority, when they're asked to look at matters within their power. Uh, they're obliged legally to undertake sufficient inquiry, which means they've got to investigate issues drawn to their attention. Now, 
they don't do that. All they ever do is write this pro forma dismissal letter back. Now, it's becoming increasingly clear that that authority in London, like the Justice Department, for example, the Privy Council, have done what is called abdicating their power. They've basically let a lot of Jersey officials effectively influence them and drive these dismissals that they put forward. Now, clearly that's not acceptable and that's going to have to be challenged in court uh, in London. But uh, quite uh, interestingly, and it's most, most unusual actually, in response to the very detailed and evidenced application I've just recently made to Michael Burt requiring a witness statement from him and informing him that I'm going to be calling him as a witness, I did get an unusual response from the uh, Justice Department in the United Kingdom, which was that they've advised me, given that it involved judicial corruption, um, to raise the matter with the Office of Judicial Complaint in the UK. So that's uh, an avenue I will be pursuing. You will be pursuing that. Well, that'll be interesting. And with this latest, you say, bundle of papers you've been served at, at, at your house, uh, this, this latest injunction or whatever it is, you're go, you, is coming, are you going to go to court and answer the whatever they're putting towards you? Are you going to uh, recognise or validate this court? No, this, this, this court has no validity. I mean, sooner or later, probably what they're going to do is uh, arrest me and put me in prison again for criticising the government, for criticising these judges and for criticising their friends. Now, this, this has no more validity than um, like a, a basically a, a, a mafia or something of that nature. It's like, for example, the way that the, the, the victim of the uh, abuse case who was so badly let down by Jersey's dean, in the case of that poor, vulnerable individual, one day the police just turned up at her house, arrested her, took her into custody. In her night clothes. In her night clothes, kept her in custody. She was eventually dragged before a court, which consisted of a judge who was a friend with people like Philip Balash and his friend, the Dean. And basically she was coerced into leaving Jersey or being jailed for a long period of time. Now that action, prior restraint it's called, on that innocent victim, that had no more validity than basically assault, kidnapping, false imprisonment, uh, and uh, uh, blackmail and extortion. That's what that action was legally. It had no more validity than that. And the same is true of the actions that these idiots uh, take uh, against me. You know, if they want to have me um, uh, arrested uh, for things, and prosecuted, or tried, and put in prison, then if they want to act lawfully, they've got to have an objective, impartial court structure, one that meets all of the accepted tests. Now, if they don't have, which they don't, a court structure that meets those tests, then it isn't valid and it has no legitimacy. So I'm not only am I not going to engage with it, I don't have to because it isn't lawful. Well, we'll be keeping an, our, our, our eye on this, as we always do, and if uh, you end up in prison in the very near future, uh, we'll sort of know why then. Indeed, yes, it's, uh, you know, it's more, more madness by the Jersey authorities who simply don't have a single wise head amongst them, actually. You know, as much as I disagreed with and didn't get on with people like the, the late bailiff Sir Peter Krill, back in those early days when I was in the States. There were those kind of um, Jersey statesmen would never, ever have let Jersey descend into the madness, the an anarchy of the situation it's in now, where basically you've got a toxic mixture of judges, lawyers, and their weak-minded politicians actually running around trying to arrest people, put people in prison, criticising them, not even a lawful judicial structure, just it's just rampant state oppression. It's madness. Illegally suspending the police chief, having vulnerable people arrested and thrown out of the island without any due cause, this is lawless anarchy. And I'm afraid 
I like to think that the old Jersey elder statesman would never ever have let Jersey descend into this bedlam. Unfortunately, we all know that the current uh, era of Crown officers are absolute uh, pygmies compared to these people and they've led this community into a position whereby you know, it's just a lawless gangster state virtually.